Check this out. 1,977 years, 134 days, 16 hours, and 28 minutes ago. Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus simply answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. The message says, love the Lord your God with all your passion, prayer, and intelligence. You see, our love for God must be sincere, not just by the words we speak, but also by engaging our souls. To truly love God, we must be passionate about Him, inside and out. The only way to follow this command is to make loving God our first priority. That means everything else takes a back seat. But there's more. Jesus also said, the second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself, which also means love others as well as you love yourself. Love the unlovable, love the ones who don't deserve it, and love like you want to be loved. So the lesson is simply this, love God, love others. But the great thing is, if we make loving God our first priority, then loving others comes naturally. All right, well, good morning, Mount Rivers Church. We want to say good morning to our newcomers as well. Thank you for the feedback. And, and also good morning to those of you guys that might be watching online. We have a really awesome experience in store for you this morning. Hope you guys have been enjoying this Love Out Loud series. Hope it's been an encouragement to you. Uh, before we get into the, uh, the message, though, I want to just throw out a quick reminder, uh, a couple reminders real quick. Number one, um, this, well... I want to get. I want to get. I want to get just a recap. Last Wednesday night was awesome. We had we had so much fun. We had our connect night, and where all of the uh, the leaders and life group uh, pastors came in, and just kind of shared about what they did. They did a great job, and and we enjoyed just kind of mingling and, and having some. Man, our people know how to cook. They came out with the food. They, they, they showed up all. to the game with the grub, and it was really 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 good. So we enjoyed just having a good time with them. If you missed connect. Don't worry about it. It's going to come back around in about six, seven weeks, and uh, it's going to be awesome. So make sure you make the next one. But this coming Wednesday night, we're going to start our new adult life group uh, series, and we've got two life groups happening, so don't miss that. If you're a newcomer and you've not joined Misty um, or myself on Wednesday nights for our newcomers life group, please plan on attending our life group. We have so much fun. We want to get to know you personally. We want to tell you about the church, and it's a really, really great time. Do you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, just so both of our other life groups, we have two other adult life groups, and they will start a new series this week as well. One is called The Easter Experience, and the other, The Grave Robber. And if you come a little bit early or you stay after the service, you can watch the trailers, and you can kind of decide which ones do I want to go to if you miss Wednesday night. But we would ask that if you're going to attend on Wednesday night, just do us a favor. Just sign your name on one of the, the sign-ups out there. Right. That way we know what room we're going to use. We kind of have already planned that, but if one group is going to be huge, then we're going to give you a different room right. because we want you to all fit. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and, and if you've not been here on Wednesday night, um, Kidsplosion happens in here, and it is a Kidsplosion. It's awesome. They have a lot of fun. And then the teenagers have Accelerate. Uh, where we do kids church on Sunday morning. So it's a great time for the whole family on Wednesday nights. Um, as you're talking about that Easter uh, series coming up as well with the life groups, that means it is time for Easter. I mean, next, hard to believe. next week we'll begin our Easter 2016 series. If you've not been at Mount Rivers Church during the Easter season, uh, Misty and I love bringing the, the Easter story to you and it's we go into detail and tell the backstory about it all it's a perfect time of year to invite maybe you've been working on friends all year round and just haven't been able to push them over the edge over these next four weeks this is the time to say hey you don't have a choice i'm gonna come pick you up i'm gonna take you out to lunch when it's over bribe them do whatever you can but you definitely want to bring them here because their lives are going to be encouraged and inspired and and uh, it's a great series to invite them to all right so you guys ready for the word this morning you sure? All right, so so we've been in this Love Out Loud series. It's been so wonderful. Today we're going to cover a topic that is, um, it's, 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 we've thrown a twist in there, but you all are going to leave really encouraged today. So what we're going to do is we're going to open in a word of prayer and then we're going to get right in. If you would bow your heads with us, please. Father, we are so grateful for your presence in this place. Your presence is our priority. We ask that you would just reveal to us who we are through your word, that you would show us the, the image of Christ 
and that you would help us to parallel ourselves to him, help us to become more like him, Father God. We, we invite your Holy Spirit to just survey our hearts and our mind and, and just show us, God, the error of our ways, show us areas of improvement where we can become more like you. We, we open ourselves up to you, Father God, and we submit ourselves to you and to the vision that you have for our lives, the dreams you have for our lives. We give ourselves to you fully through your word this morning. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. 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 Well, if you have your word this morning, we're going to take you to a passage of scripture that maybe you are familiar with or maybe you're not. And it's in Matthew chapter 18. We're going to read the first couple verses. I'm sorry, we're not either. We're going to read 21 and 22. All right, here we go. It says this. Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who has sinned against me? I want to just pause for just a minute. In this series, Love Out Loud, we've been talking about relationships. We've talked about loving your neighbor. We've talked about loving in, in a dating relationship. We've talked about loving in marriage. But today what we're going to look at is loving through forgiveness. If you're going to be in a relationship with anybody, you're going to find really fast that you have to either forgive or receive forgiveness or you're going to have walls that go up in your life. And it's not any fun to live life with walls because what begins to happen is you begin to enslave yourself. Hear me. People are going to do you wrong in this life, but it's your choice as to whether or not you live in slavery or whether you're free. Right. And today, as we go through this message on forgiveness, you're going to understand that you can be set free from the hurt and the pain that has happened to you in your life. And unfortunately, because we live in an earth-cursed realm because of what happened in the garden, we are going to go through hurt. It's inevitable. It's, it, you can't go through life and not have someone hurt you. And to be honest, we probably can't go through life and not hurt someone else, unfortunately. And so this morning, we're going to look at this. So I want to, I want to finish reading this passage. It says this, If someone has sinned against me, how often should I forgive them? And Jesus said, Peter asked, seven times? That seems like a good number. I mean, goodness, if you ask me seven times to forgive you, I'd be like... Come on, how many times do I have to yeah. forgive you of the same I, thing, I, I right? I think in our marriage we're probably already past that. The seven? Seven more. Yeah. Probably. Probably way beyond that. Maybe not for sure, but... Well, you know what? Is, what's interesting is that yeah. Jesus goes on to say this, not seven. Not seven times. He said, but 77 times. And what he meant by that is not like literally start marking it down. I mean, right. like at the 77, I'm done. We're I'm done, done forgiving you, right? right? We're probably way over 77, right, probably. in our marriage? Here's what he was saying is for infinity. You don't stop giving forgiveness. Right. You don't stop extending the love of God through forgiveness. But you know what? What I wonder sometimes is in our minds, how is that possible? You know, if you've never really gone through a lot of hurt, you can probably go, okay, I can forgive. Well, what if, what if you were raped as a child? When Brad and I were in... In youth ministry, we had a 12-year-old little girl in our youth ministry. Actually, I guess she would have been in our kids' ministry. She was raped by her stepfather and became pregnant. Now, you tell me how difficult it would be to set across from that family and explain to them that you need to forgive the person who did this to you. And yes, he's going to go to jail, and yes, he's going to be punished, but sometimes they're not. And guess what? A child is going to come into this family now as a result of rape. You know, there's difficult things. Maybe you've had situations in your life where you say they don't deserve forgiveness. They can, you know, honestly, your mind, the worst thing that could ever happen to them, that's what you want to see happen. But I want today for you to just take a step back and just think for a moment. God extended His grace to you. When we didn't deserve it, we started this series with a passage of scriptures out of Romans, and it says this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That means while we were still in our sin, while we were still doing the things that were displeasing God, He sent His one and only Son to hang on a cross to cover our sins. And the same grace that He extended to us, once we received it into our life, He expects us to extend that kind of grace to others who hurt us. So this morning, rather than just Brad and I preaching, we're going to do something different. That is, we're going to have a real life interview with someone who understands and has experienced hurt on a level that I hope none of you have ever had to go through. But if you have, her story is going to minister to you. Ms. Nikki Bassett, if you'll join us on the stage this morning, give her a Friends for many 
many years here in the Grove area. Her and her family are amazing. They join us in first service quite often. And we decided that we wanted Nikki to share this story because Nikki has an amazing, amazing story of God's grace on her life. But this morning, we are going to interview you, Miss Nikki. And can you just kind of start by just telling us a little bit about what your childhood was like? What was it like growing up in your family, in your home? Where did you grow up? I grew up in Steve, Kansas. So it's a little bit different than the world. A little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. This is going to be a... <laughs> this is Nikki's story could go for a really long time, but we've got to condense it for our service today. Um, so my childhood, I guess, started before I was born. I have no skin to my so I know it's my story, but it's just getting a check. So um, before I was even born, my biological dad wanted my mom to have an abortion. So I guess you could say. Yeah. I am a living uh, product of, you know, the abortion of the life that I went through. So um, they had to get divorced when I was two. And my mom started dating who I called dad. I started calling him daddy at four. And shortly after that, a few months before my fifth birthday, um, was when I witnessed the first beating for my mom. Um, I witnessed her having her, literally her teeth kicked out. And she always said that, she was glad it was her teeth instead of her stomach because she was eight months pregnant with my brother. So I had to kick her in her stomach. We may not have been here. So that was a long strain, probably about 11 years um, over and over and over again or something that I witnessed. And some people say that kids don't remember. I'm here to say they do, because I can remember details like it was just yesterday. Um, there were times where I didn't know where I would lay my head at night, because we would have to run, or we would have to, to try to just take shelter and, and get out of the house. So a lot of times I was the one who was responsible for that. I would have to try to get out of the house to dial 911 because he didn't allow us to have a phone in the house made it a little difficult to call for help. So um, I started working probably about the age of 12, trying to help. I had three families that I babysat for and you know, try to help with bills and food and whatever I could help for. Um, shortly after my mom had my brother, I watched her go through cancer and abuse through her healing also. Um, when I was 14 was when my surgery started. I had a tumor the size of a softball and had four surgeries. And then when I was 18, diagnosed with a chronic illness that I still have a struggle with every day. Also was in a car accident at 18, which causes had permanent damage to my spine and my neck. Um, and my losses, some people call me magnet. I like to think I'm not a magnet for these type of tragic things. But um, when I was 16, I had my friend that was murdered for her car. And then after that, it was just one loss after another. It was suicide and car accidents and just one just right after another back to back. Um, when I was a teenager, I tried to look for love in all the wrong places, I guess you could say. And um, when I was about 14, decided that maybe it'd be better if I wasn't here, one less mouth to feed, one less person my mom had to worry about, and I took a knife. And uh, luckily I, which we all know who it, who it was that was holding me, um, from not cutting deep enough, and nobody knew about it. I was in my room, I hid it from my mom, never told her, so that's kind of my Oh, Incredibly rough start, if you will. Um, so something uh, as if that wasn't enough. There was so much um, tragedy that, that launched you almost into adulthood, that transition, but there was something there was something else that happened um, that just beat all. And so tell us about that event and, and, and tell us tell us tell us quickly what happened um, 
and, and just kind of get us? Well, I remember being a teenager and, and always saying that things couldn't get worse. Even all the times, like, things just cannot possibly get worse. Well, thank you. And the bottom of my world interesting was blown out um, from under me when I was 22. My little brother was 17. And I was at, at work. I remember being tense. I was, I was working 96 that day. My mom came in. Um, and I asked him to go to dinner with her and her boyfriend that night, and I already had plans. So I didn't go. And so I went to my friends, and um, that earlier that day, our, our boss had turned on our TV. And uh, so that kind of, kind of comes, you know, it was an old TV, so it kind of comes in a, to play the next day. Um, so I went over to my friends and, you know, did my thing and got to the car to drive home, and it started to rain. And I cannot explain the god awful feeling I had in my heart. I just, I don't know how to explain it. As soon as I got in my apartment, I tried to continually call my mom. It was just, whatever it was, I knew it was my mom. And continued just over and over and over trying to call her until about 1.30. I'm to find out when I stopped trying to call her was her approximate time of bed. Um, so I had to work the next day. And it was on a Sunday, 10 to 7. And my little brother called me at work, which is unusual. He said, Mom didn't come home last night. And um, I said, I'm sure she's, you know, he thought she was with me. I said, no, she's not with me. I'm at work, you know. And um, 10 o'clock that night, the 10 o'clock news ran. It also had ran on the new news, but because my boss had thrown it away, I didn't catch the new news at work. So the 10 o'clock news ran. My little brother calls. Said there was a body found at 10 9. Two of our friends had called and said that they saw Mom's face on the news because she was a Jane Doe. She didn't have any identification on her. And as soon as he told me the location, which was half a block from my apartment, I knew whatever happened, whatever she was doing, she was trying to me. So um, I called the police department. Um, it's a hope story that you notified me over the phone, which is improper. He sent a police officer and chaplain to my apartment. Um, all I remember is being curled up in the field position on the floor, um, looking at the police officer and him describing one of her tattoos and he finished it. So it was kind of confirmation that it was her. Of course, I wanted to see her. They wouldn't let me until the next morning. And a lot of things you see on TV aren't true when it comes to law. But when I went to identify my mom's body, it was just like you can imagine. It was a, a big glass window that I had to look through and she was laying over the sheet. Um, Needless to say, that didn't go well. It ended up being carried out. Um, so what, so what, what, tell, what happened? Tell, tell us what happened with your mom. Um, she was arguing with her boyfriend. They were on a motorcycle. And they stopped at a stoplight and she got off and her purse was in a saddlebag, and so she tried to get her purse out, so that's why she didn't have any identification on her. And he pulled that really fast, and so, and of course she's mad, so she takes off walking. Um, his story, of course, is different. Uh, she walks about halfway up. Uh, he told me that he went around the block, and she wasn't there, that he said she was at my apartment. Um, but what really happened is that he tried to get her back on the motorcycle. She's arguing. Um, and he hit her, and he left her there. And because people didn't stop, she laid there for about two hours underneath the street light, half a block from my apartment, half a block from the hospital. And there was one guy that drove by her twice, said whether that he was in the They drove around my mom like she was a dog in the road. And because no one stopped, it was raining, and her official cause of death was drowning because she laid face down on her. So that's, that's, that's what happened. So, um, you know, you can't, you can't imagine the story. When you hear someone tell a story, you can't fathom unless you've walked in Nikki's shoes. But I know, Nikki, there had to come a point in your life. You said you were 22 years old, right? Right. When this happened. And so, you then had to take on raising, if you will, 
your younger brother, right? He was 17. Try your best. I mean, how do you raise a 17-year-old? So that's hard enough as a parent. I mean, you've got two parents, let alone when you're 22. But there had to come a point in your life where you made a decision to forgive the man who did this. Because obviously in our own minds and flesh, we would say, he deserves whatever he would get. And you have every right to be angry and to hold on to that. But at the same time, we know that if you hold on to the bitterness and the rage and the pain that you literally enslave yourself. It will eat you from the inside out. It will, exactly. It, it, did you know, and this is this is some research I did this week, that medically, that, that in the medical journals, that the unforgiveness in someone's life is actually a medical disease. If you look it up, it's actually a disease that medical doctors will tell you will eat you from the inside out. Exactly what you said, Ms. Vicki. So what point did it come for you? At what point in your life? How old were you? What what was it that caused you to realize you were being eaten alive because of unforgiveness and you needed to let this go? Well, I knew that anger was there the whole time. It, but I just it, it just consumed me and I don't recommend waiting as long as I did. It's it's a process and it's it's hard to get through. Um, but I remember sitting in church and it's kind of odd you were your message um, or your verse was Matthew because Matthew chapter 6 verses 14 and 15 where it talks about the Lord forgive you not forgive you if your trespasses if you don't forgive others uh, yours and so I was sitting there in church and the first one I forgave was my dad um, and I felt the weight and the peace lifted unless you experienced it it's like I'm, I'm not um, unfortunately it took a bit longer to forgive the man that killed my mom and I knew him all my life. And that was what was, I think, hard for me was because I knew the person that did it. And she had no justice. There was, um, that's a whole other story, but the, the, the course was, the case was dismissed and uh, she never had anything in court. So well, so you kind of answered my next question. That was, how did, how do you really know that you've been forgiven? And, and, and you, said, you, you said that you felt like the burden uh, was lifted off of you, right? So, but let's take a step back. I mean, obviously, coming out of this whole experience, you, you have to have been eaten up with rage and and emotions that are probably, we probably don't even have word, words in the human language to describe how messed up your world was uh, at the thought that your mom had been basically murdered. Uh, and so, but connect the dots for us. I mean, what did it look like going from your whole world being messed up to feeling like the burden had been lifted off your shoulders, what did that process of, of forgiveness look like? When you know, obviously, you, you came to a point where you realized it was going to eat you alive, the unforgiveness. But, but what what did that process look like for you as God dealt with your heart? How did you get forgiven? Well, that verse in Matthew hit me like a rock. That was the first one, and then there was just several verses scriptures after that. Um, Colossians 3.13 and forgive others as Christ has forgiven you. So I really started examining myself and all my sins and all that I'm ashamed of. And so what makes me righteous? You know, Jesus died on the cross for me for all my sins. How am I more righteous not to forgive him of what he has done against wow. me? Um, that's huge. It is huge. And that, that's, it takes a level of spiritual maturity to understand because it's just like we were talking about in the very beginning that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And so in God's eyes, sin is sin. Sin separates you from God. There's not really levels of sin. You know, if you tell, you've got that down, don't you? You know, if you tell a white lie, if you tell a lie, it's sin. But who's it hurting? But if you murder someone in human eyes, we look at that and we have different levels in our mind. But you know, in God's eyes, sin is sin and it's all the same. That's a hard pill to swallow for me. And you know, it is for everybody because what we want to do is we want someone else to be condemned, but we want to be justified in our own actions. You know what I'm saying? We want there to be an excuse. We want to be able to defend the reason we are the way we are or why we did what we did. But for someone else, it's easier for us to look and say they deserve everything they would get. So was there also a moment, and Nikki, this isn't one I wrote down, so don't get thrown for a loop for a second, okay? <laughs> was, there, was there a moment that you had to realize on the inside you also had to forgive yourself because... You had that That's down. That's my very That's next good. thing. What well, the Lord is doing. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, that like, That's amazing. When you, when you tell your story and your mom was a half a mile from your home and you know in your mind right. you're
your mom wanted you to spend the night with her, to right. be with her that night. You had plans, which, you know, that happens in life. And at the same time, to know that she was a half a mile, you had a feeling you couldn't get a hold of her. How do you deal with that? Because obviously all of us have experienced, whether it's a loss in that way, or just not being able to say, I love you one last time, or not being able, or not being able to say, I'm sorry. Because a lot of times things happen in our life, and maybe we have an argument with someone, and maybe that's the last time you'll ever see them again in this life. So was there a moment for you where you had, did you have to forgive yourself before you could forgive this man? Learn to forgive yourself. That's my it's, it's amazing. I'm telling you, she has a red line in my notes. <laughs> so God has me. Um, that is something I still struggle with, and I just have to go to Scripture and pray about it. And I mean, there's a reason why. I wasn't, wasn't there tonight. I always have people say, well, if it didn't happen that night, it would happen another night. I always say, well, I wish it would have happened that night. I wasn't supposed to be there with her. Right. So the guilt, that's a whole other level of guilt is forgiving yourself. And I don't think people think about that, but you do have to forgive yourself. Okay, so you just said something that caught my attention. So obviously, you still deal with this in that you know, the enemy uh, brings back to our remembrance those that he continually tests us. That's his job. Is to test, he's, a, he's an unemployed cherub. His job is to test us for weakness continually until our breaking point. So what you're saying is even though uh, a tragic event uh, caused, you know, you, you worked through it to a point where you really forgave this guy, but what you're saying is, is it's, 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 it'll never come to an end. I mean, you'll continually be tested to go back to that point and to harbor bitterness, but it's a continual work in progress, right? Continual. And every day I have to live, I had to get married without my mom, I had my son without my mom, and then I lost my mother in three years later, so I had to get in one of them. And I just recently lost my brother, suddenly, November. Right. Um, and the verse that was on his mirror was Luke 137, nothing is impossible with God, so that kind of goes along with it. Wow. But with, with God, anything is possible, not with yourself, but with God, because you cannot wait on yourself. So, I, would, I would make it. So it's almost like, okay, God can do amazing restoration in our lives. He can flow through us to forgive, but it's really a daily battle. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's really, it's not like you just say, okay, God, thank you for helping me to forgive this person for doing me wrong. It's done. Right. It's more like, okay, God, thank you that today I have experienced your grace and your love loving out loud, flowing through me like a funnel. I've forgiven this person once again. Thank you, God, that I've got one more day continuing to forgive this person. Yes. And you're continuing to flow through me. You're continuing to let your grace flow through me. Is that more what you're saying? It's more of a daily thing. It is. I mean, I think you have to know that you have forgiven them. You can't just say you have Like I said, you'll know. When you let that go. And you said that burden was there. lifted off of you, right? Yes. You really felt. Yes, I mean, I don't struggle every day. Sure. Um, with the, the anger in there. Sometimes you feel that well enough, just a little bit. But you just have to go to Scripture and you have to pray for it. Say, I've already I've forgiven him for this. And you have to just continue to, to lean on God, which is hard. Some people say I have too much faith because. I don't know. Can't see that's possible. That. I, that's I don't think that's possible. <laughs> But you know, you keep bringing up a point, and I think that you went to the Word. And no matter no matter what you're dealing with, the answer is always, always in the Word. No matter what the question. And it's, you know, we've been talking through this whole series that love is a choice. And the reason we wanted to bring this message today is because just the same way that love is a choice, forgiveness really is a choice. And the enemy will try to convince you to hold on to it, even by bringing it up in your mind. Because you know, the Bible says that once God has forgiven you, that he throws into the sea of forgetfulness. That as far as the east is from the west, you've been forgiven. And I imagine that for God, it's gone. But for humans, it's still there. The, the thoughts and the memories, and that's what, that's what makes it complex. Because you have to know that you know that you know that you've forgiven someone. But what I think about and what I tell people yourself. quite often is that you'll know you've forgiven because the burden will be lifted and at the same time you can remember the pain and you can remember all the details, but the anger and the rage and the bitterness that was destroying you from the inside out, that it's is gone. It's not exactly. hurt. It wasn't hurt. That was one of the things I realized. It wasn't hurt him. No. It was only hurt him. Okay, so I got a question. So does that mean that you go out and now you um, have to be best friends with them? 
That's a little bit. Let me answer it for you. Okay, the answer no. is no. The okay. answer is no. Because I did have to face him a couple times. Absolutely. Because he was a family friend. I had to go back hey. to a funeral and a wedding, and that was, that was not my day. That's I'm all sure. Not my day. But, you know, we can, people can do you wrong. You forgive them, but you don't need to have lunch with them every day. You don't have to be their best friend. You know, you can forgive and move on. We need to be very wise as to who we surround ourselves with, right? We need to surround ourselves with people that are going to build us up and not pull us down. But there's people that are contaminated with this toxic uh, waste dump of a life, you know what I'm saying? We need to not surround those people unless we're trying to minister to them. But in those cases, it's really not your job to minister to them unless the Lord says, hey, I want to do a work in them, and I'm going to do it for you. And it gives you that assignment, and that's different. One of my biggest points was, one of your questions was, how do you know you've really forgiven? And I've, also, I've answered that with a piece. Um, but when I began to pray for him, because in my heart, I don't see how a safe person could, could do it. Is anybody writing this down? But I don't, but you know, you don't know. You can't look at someone and say you're not safe. Right. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying in my heart, I, I didn't see how a safe person could do something like that. So I began to pray for him because it was hard for me to realize. How hard was that? Oh my gosh. Realizing that he deserved to go to heaven where I will be someday with my mom was, was hard. But I began to actually pray for him. So you, you began to look at him through different lenses. <laughs> You saw him as God sees him rather than the way Nikki wanted to see him for the reality of who he is. Not maybe not who he is, but what he was really. Right. You know? And one of my things is, is God gives everybody free will to do right and wrong. Sure. And one of my big things was when someone chooses wrong, sometimes, unfortunately, with their decisions that they make, there's a victim. In that case, it was my mom. It was his decision to, to make her move for It's a really good point because if you, in, in the flesh and humanity, that's what's going to happen because we all have that decision every day. Will we choose right? Will we choose wrong? And when we make a choice to choose wrong, there is always going to be a victim, whether it's through verbal speech or it's someone getting behind the wheel drunk or whether it is someone taking out their anger or their rage on someone else, there's always going to be a victim. And Revelation 21, 4 says that God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things that passed away. I read on that one a lot because what's here on earth is temporary, but what he promises is eternal. That's so that true. is so good. That That's is so powerful. good. That's right. You know, all I hear you saying is you went to the Word, you went to the Word, you went to the Word, you went to the Word. Prayer. Not lots, the beginning. Lots of prayer. No, we need, but, but God, God got you there, right? Yes. And I've seen, and not just in when we're dealing with forgiveness, I've seen this in so many instances, whether it's just just uh, becoming a, a person who is entering into a relationship with Christ. When we run to the Word, we, He begins to transform us, He begins to change. He changes our thinking from the inside out, and our thinking changes our, changes our attitude, our and changes everything when he, when he works on us from the inside out, and the, the Word of God is a mirror that we look into, and when we see it, when we see the image of Christ, and it's like God begins to take that soap, because we see the reflection of ourselves in alignment with who Christ is, and begins to do that work on us, and He says, hey, Brad, here's, here's an imperfection that we need to clean up. Here's something over here we need to clean up. Here's something, and so He continues to, He just continually works on us through His Word, and, and obviously that's what He's done in you. It's the only way He was able to, to allow His forgiveness and His grace to flow through you was because you went to the Word, and you went to His presence. In prayer. So, so just kind of to wrap this up, and this has been so great. I hope you guys are taking notes. This is awesome. What would you say? I'm sure there are probably many people that are here this morning, and those who will be watching online. What advice would you, even if you just want to recap, you know, those things that we've just discussed? I mean, what would you say to the person that would be um, in their mind right now, in their heart? They're saying, you know, I, I have unforgiveness towards this person because you know the Holy Spirit is at work, and this is how we pray as pastors: is that when you're sitting in this chair, or you're watching online, you know, that the Holy Spirit is at work dealing with your heart so that He can bring change. If we're, if we're sitting here uh, not welcoming that God would do a work, we're wasting our time. We need to be receptive to what God wants to do in our lives. 
and there's always work to be done. Always. always. This details me every day. God is still working on me, man. He is still trying to do something. Definitely the miracle not. is not over yet. I know it's not. And he's not done with you, Brad. So, so, um, so just tell us quickly, you know, what would you say to the person that's saying, I have this person in my life, they've done this to me, and I cannot even begin to imagine being able to forgive that person for what they've done to me. What would you say to them? It takes time. I don't recommend making as long as it is literally the way you from the inside out. And it, and it does hurt you physically, mentally, emotionally. Um, you have to think about it as the forgiveness isn't for that person. Because I'm sure you could care less if I forgive them. Right. It's for your healing. Your process. So, so what you're saying, hold on. Because that's really good. <laughs> so what you're saying, so what you're saying is, is, is you're, it's not that they deserve your forgiveness. Because maybe they're not sorry they did it. Right? What you're saying is, they deserve forgiveness because of who Christ is. It's, it's love out loud. Right. We, we, don't, we don't forgive people because they deserve it. Right. We forgive people not because of who they are or, or, or you know, or, or that they've, even if they've apologized, we, we, we oh, give love grant God. them okay. that grace because of who God is inside of us. Well, I just go back to Christ has forgiven me for my sins. And, um, you have to remember all that he has, he has done for me and he's forgiven me for and that's what I go back to. And you have to look at it as God sees the big picture. I think that moment in, in time was, was the worst for me when I lost my mom. And he sees the bigger picture. It's like a piece of a puzzle. It's just one little piece, but he sees the finished product. And so he can see six months from now, he can see a year from now, he can see that I was going to be sitting here right now talking to you about what I went through. And if I just help one person out there, give them that hope through Christ, even if they haven't had their mom was murdered, it's, it's, there's always something with my story that people can relate to. And Proverbs 31, 25, she is clothed with strength and dignity and she can laugh at days to come. And the reason you can laugh at days to come is because God's going to go tomorrow and the next day. Good. And no matter what you've done, where yes. you've been from, you know, I have had people put me down because of my childhood and, and how long my mom was. And my mom tried to fix people. She tried to see the best in people. Yes. And obviously that didn't work. But that doesn't mean that, that I resent her for that because, you know, she was my rock. And I saw her go through wow. and overcome a lot. Wow. Um, that is awesome. Philippians 4.13, especially those that are close to me there, but uh, I can do all things that Christ gives me strength. That one I go to daily. 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 And you just have to remember that even when you think God wasn't there, even maybe when you pushed Him away, I can look back now and see that it, even curled up in a field position on the floor, literally wanting to die myself. I literally knew it wasn't possible, but I begged God to take me instead for my brother's sake. He was holding me the whole time. Right. You've gone to the Word. You've gone to the Word. You've got to send such a... Man, that is awesome. Nikki, thank you so much for joining us today. Guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. think that somebody could experience something like that and, and still be here to tell about it, really, right? God has done amazing work in her life. And, and, um, and it's just... I know there's some of you in this place uh, today uh, that you know you might be saying, Brad, you know, man, that's that's huge, but I this person has done this to me, or this is happening. I'm telling you, God, God wants to allow His grace and His love to flow through you, and it can be done. I want you to tell real quick. I hate to put you on the spot. I hope you remember the story, but you 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 told me a story about this um, this lady that was in a similar situation and then she went to actually confront instructed by God he gave her a directive to actually confront this group of people yeah. involved in this incident what happened? Yeah one of my friends when I was a teenager I remember a very similar story and a friend of ours um, her father was murdered and he was actually mugged on a street and was mugged and murdered and there were two men 
that were involved in that murder and they did go to jail and she she grew up in a Christian home and so she knew the right thing to do but she struggled so hard with being able to forgive because of the horror, the, the horrible thing that happened to her father. And she said for years, she dealt with it for years and she would say, you know, God, I've forgiven them but she really hadn't forgiven given them. That burden had never been lifted. And one day as she was praying, God said, not only do I want you to forgive them, I want you to go to the jail where they're at. And I want you to look into the eye and I want you to tell them you have forgiven them. And she struggled with that and struggled with that and was like, I'm not going to do it. And if you've ever wrestled with God on something, you're not going to win. Like, you might as well just go ahead and give on in, right? And she said that she wrestled with God and finally she was like being eaten from the inside out and now God was dealing with her. And so she she made up her mind, I just have to do it. I don't know what the result is going to be, but all I can do is do what God has told me to do. And so she went to that jail and she sat across, they, they allowed her to go into a room with an officer there. And she sat across for two of these men that had taken her father's life. And she looked him in the eye and she said, I'm here because God has been dealing with my heart. And I'm here to tell you I've forgiven you. And she said it was at that moment that that burden that, that she'd been dealing with lifted off of her. And she knew for the first time she'd really forgiven them. But what was amazing is in that moment, and this doesn't always happen, but in that moment those two men started crying. And both these big burly men started bawling their eyes out and they said, we don't understand how you could ever forgive us for what we did. You took your dad's life. And she began to tell them the message of Jesus Christ. And she began to tell them, the reason I'm able to forgive you is not because of anything that's within inside of me. I'm nothing. But it's because Jesus Christ himself gave me life. And you deserve God's forgiveness. And she sat there and she led those two men in the sinner's prayer. And they accepted Jesus Christ. And she, I will never forget, I was about 19 years old when I heard that story. And I thought, if a person could do that, you don't understand that it's not you. That being able to forgive someone, it's not, it's not within your own power. It is Philippians 4.13 that says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. It's not within our ability because in flesh, we want people to get what they deserve. But it's through Jesus Christ working in our life that we are able to forgive someone. That's huge. You know, Misty began a scripture at the beginning of the message. And it's, it's found in Matthew 18 and 21. And the gist of this story for sake of time, is there was this there was this guy who owned millions, not thousands, millions of dollars to this king that he had borrowed money from. And the king went to go collect. And he began, uh, what the king was going to do is he was going to sell him and his family, his wife, his children, into slavery. And then basically possess all of their assets and sell it off in order to try to make up the debt. And this man just broke before the king. And he began to just beg and plead. He said, please, 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 Master, forgive me. And, and just give me a little bit of time and I'm going to pay you back. Well, the Master had pity uh, within his heart. And he let him go and he actually forgave his debt altogether. He didn't even make, it, make him pay it back. He just forgave his debt completely. Well, that man went out and he uh, ran into this guy who owed him thousands of dollars. And instead of showing him the same grace that his master had shown him, that the king had shown him, he began choking the man. And, and he had him thrown into prison because he refused to pay him back. He wasn't even in a position to pay him back. And so when the master found out about it, when the king found out what he had done, he was enraged, enraged. And basically threw everything plus the kitchen sink at this guy because he had shown this man no grace. And that's what this message is really all about. Is God wants to flow through you to show grace to somebody else. His word says that if you come to pray or you come to give your offering, if you want to go to that next step in your relationship with God, it's not going to happen. You are at a standstill with God until you forgive. Jesus is hanging on the cross and He says, Forgive them. They don't know what you're doing. And in the Lord's Prayer, he says, forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. If you want a breakthrough in your life, maybe you're praying and you're believing God for something, but you have unforgiveness towards somebody else. I'm telling you, you're not going to experience that breakthrough in your walk until you begin to forgive. It will eat at you like a cancer. It doesn't belong 
the enemy is happy as long as he can allow you to harbor that bitterness and that unforgiveness because he knows he has you right where he wants you. God can't flow through your life like he wants you until you learn to forgive. And here's the good news. It's in you to do it. While we were still sinners, Christ came and died for us. In that same spirit, can you not just begin? But Pastor Brad, it's been 25 years. You can't understand how long it's been. I've been hurting day after day after day after day because of what this person has done to me. Yes, I know. But do you not think that, that God, do you think God understands your situation hanging on the cross? We have no excuse but to begin to just let it go. Let God be God. Let His love and forgiveness flow through you today and get rid of that cancer and watch a breakthrough happen in your life. It starts not on Monday. It starts today. Today, God wants to do this work with you. And then there might be some of us in this room that you don't even remember but you're harboring that forgiveness. And, and you don't even remember what happened. And you still have that forgiveness in your heart. God wants to heal that today. Amen. Would you guys stand with us? This is your moment. This is your time. The worship band is going to play a song. And what we're going to do is a little bit different than we normally do. Um, these altars are always open. But right now, in particularly, we want to encourage you to find a place, especially if the Holy Spirit's dealing with your heart right now and you just really need to lay something before God, come and find a place down here on these steps. We want to pray for you. We want to encourage you. God wants to do a work, a miracle in your life today. He wants to move in your life. He wants to move your faith forward. But there's got to be that breakthrough. You let it go and let it go. Would you come at this time? Find a place at these steps. Let us pray for you. Would you come now? Come now. Come now. Come on. In Jesus' name. Let unforgiveness flow through our lives. Amen. Come on. Come at this time. I know there's people in this house. I know that there are people in this house. Come on. Thank you for being an example. Anybody else want to step out and be bold and say, I need God to just begin to do a in my life. Maybe you thought you had forgiven somebody and it just keeps creeping up and you feel like it's just eating at you and you're having a hard time really truly forgiving that person. Would you come? Come on. We have to take it a day at a time sometimes. Come at this time. Let God's love flow through your life right now. Come on. Holy Spirit, begin to just heal our heart so far. Anything, Father God. Maybe it was a
burden of unforgiveness would be taken off of our lives. You are in a supernatural way, God. If you would just, God, just push us, push us over the edge, Father God, in that spirit of forgiveness. Let your love flow through us right now, Father. Father, as we rejoice in you this morning. And I walked into Misty and I said, 
I didn't say, but just a few words to her. I said, you know, good morning. I said, watch this. I got on the phone. She said, what are you doing? I said, watch. And I just made a phone call. And my God, just fountains of tears just came. I mean, the second, whoo. I just, I just told, I just told this, this man, I said, I'm so sorry. I said, you, you didn't even know my thoughts towards you, but I've been extremely, extremely bitter because of the way that you handled this situation. And you didn't even know that I was, I was really, um, I had not forgiven you. He had no idea. But I knew, God knew. And I said, I want to tell you right now, I'm really sorry. And I need you to forgive me because my heart wasn't right. And he just started laughing. He said, man, he said, man I'll, I'll, I'll forgive you as long as you forgive me. I said, deal. And man, I'm telling you, just like Nikki said before, this burden was lifted off my shoulders. I felt like I could fly. My gazelle attacked. And there was a few other things where God was dealing with me. And, and, and we worked those things out. And God began to bless the church. Because it's His church. And I'm just a vessel. I'm just a tool in the hands of God. And that's when it clicked. And He dealt with us on fasting. As a church. Which begins this Wednesday at noon. So Saturday at noon. You want to know why this is happening this week? Because I broke. I didn't want to fast. I like food. But God broke me. And he said, you're going to be obedient. Do it. He wanted this church to tithe. I said, I don't want to tithe from the church's funds. We need that money to grow the church. He said, I'm building the church. Do it. So now today, 10% of the revenue goes out to other ministries that don't affect us in any way. Because it's God's part. And God has blessed. So... I want to say thank you this morning to those of you who allowed God to do a work in you. All right. Isn't that awesome? With all heads bowed, eyes closed, I want to give an opportunity this morning. If you do not know Jesus, Jesus wants to know you. And this is your moment. This is your time. Christ is calling you in this moment right here, right now, for your life to never be the same again. The question is, will you let God be God in your life? Or are you going to be like I was and be stubborn and prideful like a bump on a log? I hope the answer this morning is I give up. I give in and I'm going to let God be God. I'm going to count to three. When I, and on three, I want you to raise your hand this morning. If this is you, and you'd say, Brad, I want a real and life changing relationship with Jesus that is contagious. It means you're going to admit that you have fallen short like I did. You're going to believe upon your heart that Jesus is Lord. You're going to confess with your mouth. He is who He says He is. You're going to dedicate from this moment forward. You're going to live for Him all the days of your life according to His Word. It sounds hard, and it is hard, but the good news is God is so huge, and He wants to live inside of you to help you every day along the way. You can do it, and you've got a church that's dreaming big for you, so you will do it. And so on the count of three, if that's you today, you say, Brad, I want Christ. I want you to raise your hand. Are you ready? One, two, three. Who are you today in this house? You say, I want Jesus. Amen. Amen. And that goes for those of you watching online as well. Jesus wants to live inside your heart. So what we're going to do right now as a church, we're going to pray with you. And we're going to agree with you as you receive Christ as your personal Savior. Would you repeat these words after me? Father, I love you. I thank you for Jesus. I know that I've sinned and fallen short. Cleanse my heart, oh God. Make me new. I confess my sins to you right now, Lord. I believe that Jesus is who He says He is. I confess with my mouth that He is Lord. I dedicate from this moment forward that I'm going to live for You, God, according to Your Word. Surround me with Godly people and make Your house my home.
In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Give a hand for those that came to Christ today and for those who allow God to flow through them and forgive them. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us today. If you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself, give to our ministry. We've made giving easy here at Mountain Movers Church. If you have your smartphone, just text the number 918-223-8090. Just push in the amount you want to give and push send. It's that easy. If you don't have your smartphone, not a problem. You can mail your giving just as easy to 24,000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma 74344. Thanks for watching today. Hey, remember, we're dreaming big for you. We'll see you next week.